Hey everybody, this is Bernardo Escobel, and I'm here to paint the Mandalorian quarter scale figure. This is the way. All right, to kick this thing off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna base coat the leather goods on him, boots, pouches, bandolier, and some of the belt. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start putting on the leather color I mixed up for his belt and bandolier. Got more of a red, red tone to it. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and apply a wash to the leather accessories, the belt, bandoliers, and all the little pouches, change the tone on them, and just start weathering in general. I'll do a, a quick wash and then I'll, I'll get my little makeup sponge here, which I picked out to give it some texture. I'm gonna add a little bit of kind of like a yellow ochre mixed with a, a light orange and apply the weathering and whatnot like scratches with my sponge here. Now the weathering would most likely happen on the high points or especially where it's wrinkled or you know whatever it's gonna rub on or whatnot. So now what I'm gonna do is give a wash of this raw umber slash purple transparent color I mixed up here just to change the tone a little bit. I will remove just a little bit with my little texturing sponge here. Get a little bit of this orange color and do more weathering edge work just to pop out a little bit more of the highlights. And I'll go back with different tones of that orange color, yellow as well. And now I'm going in with more of that wash color. It's gonna be more directed, not an overall wash. I put the cylinder portions on just to tie it all together. Now I'm gonna go in with my airbrush. I'll do an overall mist of that purpley brown color that I have mixed up or violet. Little spritz here of alcohol and give it some cool breakup. Just a little dab of my sponge here. All right, I'm done with the holster and I'm gonna repeat the process and techniques I, I did with that onto the rest of the belt, but using different tones, making them different colors. Some will be more red, some will be more reddish brown. This plate back here is a, is a metal plate and I'm gonna go ahead and just block that in in black real quick. When I go in with metallics, I like to use black as a base coat. That's pretty much it for the belt right now. Now I'll be moving on to the shin guards, which are darker brown. Since this is like an armor piece, I'm gonna clear coat it with a uh, satin finish to give it kind of a semi-gloss sheen to it. So I have the left shin guard here. I'm going to give it a wash, like a dust color, dirt color, and rubbing off the high point so that it stays in the crevices, like where dust would go. Now I'm just dry brushing uh, like kind of like a reddish brown on the highlights. Since it's got two types of leather color on here, I'm gonna go ahead and mask around the part that I will airbrush a base color. Now I'll go ahead and mask this really thin band of leather, another color. Same colors as I was using on the belt here, misting it really quick. So I'm gonna be adding washes make this more of an orange brown. Going in with my sponge, kind of giving it some texture, just stippling. I'll give it some spritz of a denatured alcohol. It'll give some harsh lines, kind of like water lines and whatnot. So now I'm just adding some scratches, real loose. And I want to go on a little, a little dry, not too wet. I'm gonna go ahead and fog the edge of this leather piece with kind of a darker, uh, almost looks like a burnt effect to it where the center will look a little bit more faded. For that, I am gonna mask again. Once it's all tied together and we get this piece together, we'll see what needs to be refined, but for the most part, that's what we're getting. Now I'm gonna weather this shin guard. Now I'll dab off most of the wash. Just wanted to make it look like it's dirt. I'll go ahead and hit these two parts that I masked off with the color that I've used for the other pouches. So now I'm gonna mask off the leg flare. 
just so I can hit that strap with a different color. Stipple some of the lighter yellow ochre that I used previously for weathering the leather and sponge on some little scratches and chips, if you will, on the to the leather. That's it for the shin guards. Next up, we're gonna be working on the boots. I already started masking the portions that will be gray. And then here is my paint color that I'm gonna airbrush on. Let's undo the masking here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this trim around here, the raw umber. There's actually a sculpt, so I'm just following that, blocking it in. Now I'm gonna block in the, um, the soles. Just like I did the other leather work for the pouches and the belt, I'm gonna stipple with my sponge and brush going back and forth to give these boots some breakup and show some modeling of the leather. I'm gonna do one last shading with my airbrush just to get the depth. So I'm gonna shade around the bottom of the shoe and bring it up just so I can give the sculpt and the detail of the shoe some contour. That's pretty much it for the boots. I'm gonna go ahead and put the color on the gloves because he's got like orange yellow tips on the gloves. So I'll be hitting these tips with this color and then come back and just start on the, the black on the gloves. Airbrushing this, I would have to mask off the, the yellow. So there's advantages and disadvantages of hand brushing or uh, airbrushing. I'm gonna dry brush a lighter yellow on here, giving some uh, highlights to these gloves just to make the detail pop, accentuate the sculpt a little bit. I'm going to dry brush gray on the black. Here on the gloves, I'm gonna put a transparent raw umber shading gray dirt wash on them just to dingy them up. So what I'm gonna do now is I have the hand guards and I am going to mask off the triangle that he's got on his hand guard here. So I'll unmask them. I'm gonna get the base color that I used for the hand guards, just a little bit of weathering to it. I mean, he's, he's seen some action, so. I'm gonna go ahead and add a raw umber wash, and it's gonna be very light, because they're not that heavily weathered, but just to give it some depth, I'll go ahead and do a little pin wash around the edge, just to pop out the detail. That's pretty much it for the um, hand guard. Now I'm gonna move on to the hip guards, and I'm gonna start off by base coating them. So I mix up a gray color. I'm gonna add a dust wash to this and then just start removing a little bit, going back and forth. Now I'm going back in and just adding more of the wash in the panel lines, making it look like dirt got caught in the crevices. And then I'm going to use my toothbrush and I'm gonna add some splatter of the same color I'll add one more layer of splatter. And at this time I'm gonna use the dirty, like oily wash of raw umber and shading gray. So I've already based out the suit and I'm applying a quick first pass of highlights. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mask. I don't want the belt to get misted with the highlight color. So I'll do it at an angle just to get the tops of the wrinkles and folds. I'm gonna go in with the shading color now just to hit underneath around here just to start giving it some depth. So now that I did the shading, I'm adding some just slight more highlights, but this will be more like a light direction. I'm not gonna do the back so much because you know the light is hitting this way, so we kinda wanna give it you know some realism and some depth. I like some of the wrinkles in the fabric. That can always get toned down again with a, a wash, which I will do into the wrinkles. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the cummerbund portion, if you were, or the belly portion, which is a different color, different fabric here. So I'll go ahead and just hairbrush in a downward mist. For the highlight color, I'll just add a little bit of white, mimicking the light with the paint. So I have a, a color here that I pre-mixed and then go back and forth and, and make sure it's got a good good shadow going on there. 
Now, just like the highlights with the shadows, I'll, I'll try to go under the folds and wrinkles so I don't blow out all the highlights I did earlier. You know, I put the arm on just so I could balance out the, the shading on both, both parts. So now I'm gonna shade the belly here. Use a shading gray, because it's a different fabric. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this belly portion a wash because it is slightly weathered. Quick wash on this whole thing, that way you get the little stitch detail and the detail in the panels. Also gives it some breakup too. Let's remove some of that highlight a little bit. I'll do a wash on this portion so it matches as well. I'll add a dirt wash in the uh, panel lines just to give it a, a little dusty look. Just wrapped up the body and now we're gonna head on over to Anthony who's painting the armor pieces. Hi, I'm Anthony Mestis. I have some Mandalorian armor here, ready to go. Base coated, primed, let's get started. I'm laying down the first coat of uh, metallic and we shoot it over black because black is the best base coat to allow for that paint to really shine. The whole intention is to get it as mirror-like as possible. This is a chrome paint. You know, the reflectivity of it is super bright. So basically what I've done is I've sprayed a solvent-based clear coat over this, a high gloss clear coat. What it's done is it's reacted with the previous paint that we sprayed. It's basically kind of killed the chrome and it's taken on a gunmetal look, which is what we want. Now that the gloss coat is dry, we're onto the second coat of silver. So this time we're spraying fairly light just to bring the luster back up onto the piece. We're using the same initial chrome all clad. Now that we have the second coat of metallic finish on there, I'm gonna give it a protective coating with a water soluble clear. And I'll be spraying this at a low air pressure just like I did with the uh, metallic finish. And then I'll buff it back up. It's a little bit darker. There's a slight shift to it. It's not as mirror-like. All right, the next step in the process is we're gonna be weathering the armor. So the weathering on this piece isn't gonna be very heavy, but it's needed to kind of bring in that realism. So now that I brushed the color over the helmet, I'm basically going back with a damp sea sponge, getting a nice stipple. And then I like to use a paper towel and kind of further stipple off the wash. I'm gonna repeat this process throughout the armor set. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the armor that was previously painted by uh, my compatriot here, Anthony Mestis. Okay, now I'm finishing off the helmet visor with some gloss black. Just wanna accentuate some of these wrinkles and just add a little bit more drama just so it's, you know, you can paint realistic and then after that you gotta kind of like, all right, let's pump up the drama. It kind of helps the piece out, I think. I'm adding a dark wash on some wrinkles that are really deep just to make them pop a little bit more. I like to use my Q-tip just to blend it in. I'll uh, look at it through my camera and see uh, where it's at. So I see, yeah, it's pretty dark there. It's pretty cool. Got a nice little beam of uh, directional lighting there here coming down. Next up, I'm gonna work on the thigh armor. I'm just gonna use some silly putty. Just do a quick masking. I have my color here that I've mixed up. It's got a bluish green gray color. So now we're gonna mask off this side here. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to um, mimic that the paint got chipped from the blast or whatever he got hit there with. So I'll go around with some liquid latex. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, spray that orange brown color. I'll come back and start adding weathering to it, getting it all weathered up and dirty looking. I want to get all these landmark weathering chips and dings in there. It's basically a gunmetal. All right, I'm going to add a wash to this leg panel, spritz of alcohol to break it up a little. I like to drag it away or push it into the corners so it looks like dust has gotten in the corners and whatnot. So I'm just cutting it in with that blue color just to soften up that edge. And then now I'll go back 
with another raw umber shading gray dirt wash on them to dingy it up even more. Now I'm just going back and forth and trying to get streaks in there and some little spots. Okay, now I'm adding scorch marks around the well. Now I'm cleaning up some of these scorch marks here. So I'll go back and forth with the silver and some of the black. And now I'm blending back in again with the shading gray. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the uh, weld with a bright chrome, but first I'm gonna apply some black, a gloss black. So now that I'm unmasking, I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten up here with the scorch marks, clean it up a little bit. And now polishing just to give it that sheen. Next up, I'm gonna work on the child. So I just already established a color, base coated it out, and right now I was just hitting it with highlights. I'm adding some freckling here where I dial down the air pressure on my airbrush. Now I'm cleaning up and softening up the freckles or speckling, if you will. And then I'll go ahead and add a blue wash just to tone it all down and tie it all in. Break it up with my sponge here. Spritzing some alcohol to break it up and give it some blood vessels and capillaries and then I'll go in with my brush once again and start manipulating some of those. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stipple on my yellow green color here throughout the skin. So I'll airbrush a magenta on there and then I'll go ahead with my clear red as well, transparent red, and just blend it all in together. And I'll be going back and forth here with some yellow as well. Now I'm gonna go back and forth throughout the face and just start planting colors around. I'll be going in and out of the ear with some reds and magentas. Now I go back and forth throughout the skin, plotting in those colors, popping out that detail with my transparent blues, some violets. I wanna go ahead and uh, drop some hair on this thing with a very light gray. And just add wisps with my fan brush and I'll go back and forth with my sponge. Now onto the eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my pencil here and draw them in just to get the right position and shape and then go ahead and use a shading gray just to base coat it and get a good bead on where they're gonna lay. Now I'm mixing up my gold yellow color here that I'll use for the iris. Using shading gray once again, just to get a good position, not so opaque. Just go very lightly. So now I'm just trying to get in there and, and add the striations. You know, looking at the eye and getting all those little striations at this scale. Very minute little details that I'm trying to get in there. Pupil is going to be a little darker. So I'm using a glossy black, carbon black here. Cleaning up the eye here with some gray, white. Adding my satin gloss, which I'll finish off with the high gloss on the pupil. And there he is, the child all finished. Well, that was a lot of parts, but here's your Mandalorian figure all wrapped up. <laughs>